So you may be wondering why I'm choosing to tap on a musical album cover. Um, while we're talking about space. <laughs> it's because this is meant for exploring the mind. Today is the other realm of the unknown, and that is outer space. And uh, I'm going to set that down and pick up a more appropriate, a more appropriate piece of art. This book. So. The Magnetospheric Multiscale, or MMS, Mission Studies, it's the mission that studies the mystery of how magnetic fields around Earth connect and disconnect, explosively releasing energy via a process known as magnetic reconnection. MMS consists of four identical spacecraft that work together to provide the first three-dimensional view of this fundamental process which occurs throughout the universe. The mission observes reconnection directly in Earth's protective magnetic space environment the magnetosphere. By studying the um, reconnection in this local natural laboratory, MMS helps us understand reconnection elsewhere as well, um, such as in the atmosphere of the sun and other stars and in the vicinity of black holes and neutron stars and at the boundary between our solar system's heliosphere and I marked here and we have interstellar space being taught about the solar system and the planets, I think science can come across as so dead and lifeless, and um, the more you understand that it's not just a bunch of balls of rock with some gas on the outside of them orbiting mundanely around this, you know, spotlight in the middle. It's so much more complex than that. So many more layers. And I think maybe I should have named this channel Let's Find Awe instead of Let's Find Out. Because that's what informs. That's what guides me when I'm looking for topics to uh, consider talking about, and the stellar shockwave, it's, um, it's really pretty humbling to think that our sun is protecting us, yet potentially killing us at the same time, it's, what is it, um, it's a nuclear bomb, it's millions and millions, um, Sun. I forget what statistic. It's it's a <laughs> it's a it's millions of nuclear thermonuclear explosions being r relatively contained by 
the mass of the particles being fused together. There's so many of them. I mean, the universe, the solar system, rather, is. It's something like 99, well over 99% mass of the solar system. Yeah, the sun itself is uh, between 99.8 and 99.9% of the solar system's mass. The sun, solar system, mass, all those cool words. Just want to talk really close to your ear for a second and really get you to understand how large the sun is. So if you want to go see this short documentary that we're going solar winds 
ocean of our galaxy. So it's a, it's a very dynamic relationship, and I think one worth studying, and much more so now that I'm, I'm more aware of the, uh, these magnetic fields between the relationship between our magnetic field and in the sun's magnetic field. And apparently, there are points at which the two magnetic fields create a continuous pathway and actually connect across 90 million miles of space. So let's, let's find out more about that. So science fiction is often obsessed with the idea of portals, but it actually turns out that they do exist, and we can see here these little, um, this is a not to scale depiction of our sun and the, the interaction between these two magnetic fields, and there's these little points that are called X points. And this is some research that is funded by NASA and our government. And um, it's really, really optimistic to know that our government still is funding these seemingly useless probes into the inner workings, the, the nature of nature of our universe. Um, you know, I, I hope it has very productive, useful results, but it's very cool that we are part of a civilization that is putting forth a fair amount of money, not an, as much as maybe we should, but still nonetheless, it, it is where we're really, really probing deep into our own little microcosm, our own little part of the universe. And as cool as it is to look way billions of years away into space, of light years away, I think it's fascinating and awe-inspiring that our own little neck of the woods, just the tiny little distance between our Earth and our sun is so much more complex, dynamic, alive, energetic, powerful than, uh, than, than I, I ever realized. So, these are called X points, or electron diffusion regions explains the plasma physicist, Jack Scudder, of uh, the University of Iowa. They're places where the magnetic field of Earth connects to the magnetic field of the Sun. And this creates an uninterrupted path from leading from our own planet to the Sun's atmosphere. 90 million miles away, 90 million miles, there's a, this, this field right here, this connection, and it's, you know, it's, it's really hard not to really think about the, the metaphor, the religious metaphors and imagery when talking about things that are connected across such vast distances as 90 million miles and we do have, um, you know, quarks that are supposedly connected across millions of light years, let alone miles. Um, or I always use that phrase the wrong way. Yeah, millions of, of light, light years, let alone billions, I guess I should say. But nonetheless, something more tangible, something more macroscopic 
such as magnetic fields, something we can actually interact with, with a compass. Because um, it's hard to interact with a quark, you know? It's so microscopic, it's so nanoscopic that it seems uh, sometimes out of our sensory experience. Um, so, let's see. NASA's Themis spacecraft and Europe's cluster probes suggest that these magnetic pro, um, portals open and close dozens of times every day. get to the little graphic. There we go. And this is a really cool visual depiction of the microenvironment relative to the rest of the universe, of course, of our Earth and its magnetic fields and the field lines and how they... This is, of course, two dimensions, but you can, of course, strap, extrapolate it to three dimensions. We see here, from the South Pole to the North Pole, the lines go out, and they come back and, and they create a loop. Or, in three dimensions, they create a bubble of sorts. And here, they don't go as far out, because this is the sun facing side of uh, the magnetic field and of course the earth is always rotating so it's again very dynamic but the sun and solar winds mostly get brushed they get brushed aside it's like they the Earth is just constantly brushing, brushing these uh, barrage of solar winds, hot air out of Earth. Um, not actually air, of course. That's metaphor. And there's this thing right here called the bow shock, and that is the pretty much the threshold at which beyond it, outside of our, away from Earth, is 
no more magnetic field, no more significant magnetic field for uh, from the Earth, and you're very, very, very much exposed to pretty much the full brunt of the uh, of the solar wind at that point. Okay, but these um, these magnetic portals that that we're talking about here, these magnetic from Earth every day, a uh, few times a day, a few dozen times a day, even. And it's where the geomagnetic field, which is our magnetic field, meets the onrushing solar wind. Most portals are short-lived, and um, I guess the interaction between the solar wind and the particles of, uh, so the, the particles of the, the extremely energetic solar wind particles in our magnetic field. They play, they dance, and at certain points there's a connection made and it opens up. I'll show you in this uh, clip here. And it kind of, it pushes so hard against our dynamic geomagnetic field that it causes it to, to kind of open up and a new one, but kind of flows, like, takes its place. But uh, we'll, we'll find out in the graphic here. Let's look. So. Okay. So this Themis probe, the spacecraft probe, were used to, uh, five of them were used to construct cross sections, indicating a flux rope detached from the magnetosphere. Um, and, uh, the way they, the, the way they look at the Earth's geomagnetic field, field is, uh, is, is almost like these ropes it's like these lo these large cylinders wrapping around and they wrap into each other but still remain distinct ropes so let's see it's um so these little portals um the kind of through which magnetic wind a solar wind sorry as being in this magnetic bubble, which um, is fairly uh, uniform along its perimeter. And there are certain points at which it opens up, and a lot of the solar winds can flow through and create these auroras, these beautiful looking auroras right here. And, uh, so here we go. This is the magnetospheric multi-scale mission. And what's going to do is orbit at varying levels, varying distances from Earth, and detect the strength, the magnitude of this, of course, because we can't visibly observe the magnetic field, so it's very much a, uh, we're very much relying on technology of these magnetic probes, and um, we get, just like uh, an old ship measuring the depths of the ocean by dropping a line, and simply understanding that it hits bottom at certain different depths, and they get a vaguely uh, low resolution understanding of the contour of the bottom of the ocean, so that's, that's what we're doing. We're getting a increasingly higher resolution gauge of, uh, of our magnetic field. So the 
issue with finding the magnetic portals is that they're very elusive and, of course, invisible. Um, scientists were worried that there weren't any signposts, obvious ways to detect them, but they, uh, they actually are. They're able to, they're actually able to, uh, detect some of these lines via the process. So the process of magnetic reconnection, mingling lines of magnetic force from the sun and earth crisscross and they join to meet the openings. They join to create the openings called X points. Um, it's crazy. So yeah, let me just show you I have the transcript I'm reading from, but um, the visual is the best way that I understood it. So, so you have the solar winds buffeting. There you go, this visual right here. And I'll, I'll rewind this. I think this is such a cool visual. It's like these um, elastic bands, you know? It's like the Earth has these magnetic elastic bands that get buffeted, and then they they get stretched, stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched until they snap, snap and uh, form a closed. spacecraft spent years in Earth's magnetosphere, and it encountered many X-points during its mission because the polar carried sensors similar to those of the MMS. And Scudder, a resident expert, decided to see how an X-point looked to the polar using polar data. And they, uh, using polar data, they found five simple combinations of magnetic field and energetic particle measurements that tell us when we've come across an X point. So this is how they're going to detect them, but I want to find out more about what, about the nature of them. Okay. And here's the mission overview. Well, let's, let's get into the science just a little bit to get a little better understanding of it. So 
So yeah, they, the sun doesn't bombard, the solar wind doesn't rocks and flames, it's protons and electrons. It's these uh, cosmic particles. And of course it's propagating outward in concentric circles from the uh, sun. It's not just a unidirectional laser beam hitting the earth, so all the planets in their magnetic fields are very much dynamically interacting with the solar winds. They create a, uh, an envelope. This is the solar shield almost. It creates an envelope that protects the entire solar system and that's so cool. So the sun, the source, is the sun of course. It's in these reactions, superheat the gas surrounding the star and create plasma. When a volcano explodes, tons of ash is sent into the sky, and the same thing happens on the sun. The sun is blasting its plasma out into the solar system. The speed of the particles depends, of course, on blast of energy it was from 1973 in December and it marked one of the mightiest eruptions that they had observed in 25 years wow so beautiful pretty active, more active areas of the sun because they're funneling magnetic field lines out of them. I don't know, we'll figure that out though. Um, yeah. So the sun is blasting out its plasma into the solar system and the 
speed of the particles depends on how active the sun actually is. The particles could move at over a hundred thousand miles in a second. A hundred thousand miles in a second. So electric, of course electricity and magnetism we know are closely related. They're um, opposite sides of the same coin. These particles stretch the magnetic field of the sun around the planets. Astronomers call it the interplanetary magnetic field, or the IMF. You uh, also. gravitationally bound super massive um, area of space of highly dense mass and particles that are so so tightly packed and so piled on top of one another that they create unthinkable pressure pressure on the inside of the sun is so much that it compacts particles together, overcoming the repulsive negative charges of the electrons in their outer shells and slapping them together, creating nuclear fusion, the fusion of the nuclei of these particles at the center of the sun. And it's so dense that even a nuclear explosion, the light from that explosion takes years. I think it's something crazy, like thousands of years to get to, to even get to the outer surface of the sun. So most of the light that we're seeing right now, if you go outside and it's light, is actually thousands and thousands of years old. Production. And so, on top of that, all these complexly interacting and highly energetic particles, the sun is spinning. Spinning in the IMF. The IMF, actually, the interplanetary magnetic field, actually looks like a spiral. And we call this the Parker spiral of the, uh, the rotation of the sun there. So I'm deflecting. And of course, to go over what we did, we deflect the magnetic field. The, the IMF is deflected by our own geo. Instead of solar, it's the geomagnetic field. And um, a good example of what geomagnetic field is protecting us from is looking at the moon which has no active magnetic field all these charged particles are constantly hitting 
the side of the moon that's facing the sun. So, uh, yeah, all right, guys. I mean, that's pretty much. I'll, I'll, I'll end it with the mission overview for the magnetospheric multi-scale mission. So NASA launched the magnetospheric multi-scale mission, the MMS, the MMS mission, on March 12, 2015, and the MMS consists spacecraft that orbit around the Earth through the dynamic magnetic systems surrounding our planet to study the little understood phenomena called magnetic reconnection. The magnetic reconnection, or, or magnetic reconnection, there's multiple ones that happen all the time, apparently is the dynamic interaction between our Earths and our solar, our suns, geomagnetic and solar magnetic fields. It's a phenomenon unique to plasma that is the mix of positively and negatively charged particles that make up the stars, fill the space, and account, fill space and account for an estimated 99% of the observable universe. So, so MMS will travel directly through areas near Earth known to be magnetic reconnection sites. On the sun side of Earth, the reconnection can link the sun's magnetic fields. Um, its magnetic field lines to Earth's magnetic field lines, allowing material and energy from the sun to funnel into Earth's magnetic environment. On the night side of Earth, reconnection is believed to help trigger the auroras, also known as the northern and southern lights. So it's a uh, it's kind of like a hyperconductive freeway for the solar particles, the cosmic particles, the plasma that's ejected from the sun. And reconnection occurs when magnetic field lines cross and release a gigantic. Yeah, I guess that's something that uh, that I didn't really explain earlier. I kind of occurs when magnetic field lines cross and release a giant amount of a giant burst of energy. It's a fundamental process throughout the universe that taps the energy stored in magne magnetic fields and converts it into heat and energy in the form of charged particles acceleration and large scale flows large scale flows of matter so cool so all right guys well i love uh exploring both inner this book is a, a beast but it's pretty cool the origins and history of consciousness and outer space and outer space in our amazing universe and we really are in an amazing place and we have no we, we don't have the faintest idea of its fundamental of its nature you know like you could say the big bang say God, but we don't know where and ultimately where, when, 
what it came from, you know, it's, and that's, that to me is so, yeah, just, it's so meaningful, I think you can find so much meaning in that, so, in the, uh, meaning in the, the huge, complex, yet very elegant in a lot of ways, but also powerful and, and uh, um, kind of terrifyingly powerful swaths of, of interactions between energy and matter and and the dance of physical objects micro macro nanoscale across distances that are mind-boggling and it's so cool that we exist in that and that we get to be on a on a little blue and green oasis adrift protected with a heat source just far enough away so that it's not frying us but close enough that it's not leaving us to freeze over in the dark cold depths of space so I, I love that we get to share it with each other. And I really love that I can share it with you. So thank you for, for watching, guys. You, you, uh, every single one of you watching, especially if you're watching to this point, you're the reason why I make this stuff. And it's so, so awesome. It's so meaningful for me to get to connect with you every time, so leave a comment, and I'll try to get back to you, and, um, I, I really hope, as always, you, you got something out of this, and if nothing else, it was something to relax and focus on while you drifted off to sleep. I hope it infused your wonder and awe and meaning about this vast playground that we're a part of together at this specific point in time. That will be it for tonight, guys, so I hope you sleep well. And, um, yeah, we're gonna continue the Odyssey. We're gonna continue to make the topics you want to hear. Let's see, actually, let me look right now. I tried my best to not look at the poll to see what you guys chose. The most recent one, what video topic you guys wanted to hear. So let's, let's look right now. It 
words as heroes, heroines, gods, and goddesses from all around the world. A fully illustrated guide to more than 500 key characters in world mythology. So, imagine it. Awesome. You've been wonderful. Thank you for all the support.